So if I want to go into the lean scheduling piece, I need to go to tasks and I need to select the work plan screen. Now, when we're looking at the work planning board, I have basically three sections to this particular screen. You'll see I've got a list on the left-hand side. They refer to this as the hopper. This is activities and tasks. So if I have tasks sitting under these activities and I open the tasks, I would see them sitting under there. Now I've got weeks on the other side, on the right-hand side. If you want to get some more screen space, make it a little easier to read, I can just close both of those up. And you've got the arrows available, so at any point you can go and open them back up again. Now, why do we want to do lean scheduling? Well, as Ian was saying, some of the um, schedules that are ending up in P6 Client, in P6 Web, uh, sometimes they're not down to the field level. Sometimes they're maybe down a little too far, but they're not taking into consideration what's actually happening in the field. So this gives you the opportunity to carry out some of what they call poll planning, lean scheduling. So poll planning basically is working backwards. So you're working from the end to get to the to the start point, and it is also something that allows stakeholders to identify the potential roadblocks that could appear down the road. Well, for example, I've got my little EWP1 added work. If I break this down into the activity, this activity, sorry, into the tasks that are required to complete this work, I see something happening here. I've got two sets of tasks going on while this activity is happening. Now, this piece might slide down through the cracks if I'm just tracking this particular activity and this kind of thing is never brought to light. What happens if I have a, a problem with one of these particular tasks? Now, just before we go into the details for the planning board where we've got our activities and we've got our tasks. Now, we do have some options at the top so we can go in and, for example, say we want to see the tasks only without the activities. This works better for some, some presentations, some meetings because it's a little less busy or we can take it back to the activities and the tasks underneath. Now, when I'm breaking these particular activities down, and it wouldn't be me alone, you can do this in a planning meeting, but don't let this scare you away because if you have a large list of tasks that need to come into this file, you do have the functionality where I can download a template and I can import them. And I've done that on a few files already. But this particular one, I put them in by hand simply because I wanted just a small example. So if I go into any of these particular tasks and I look at the information that's in them, for example, if I just select my added work item three here. Now, in this case, this particular task has a task name you assign the company that it belongs to. Now, I don't mean going through these, these details to be a training session at all. Just want to make you aware of some of the items that are in here because these items are used to roll up our analysis that we'll get to in just a few minutes. So we have an assigned user. We have the activity it belongs to. Now, when they talk about poll planning, that works backwards. So you'll notice what's on here that you are resetting if you're going to reset or just grab and pull this task in the graphics, what will be reset is the due date. That's the end date. So we're working backwards. Now the duration is sitting in here. What I have on the next tab, this is a very interesting piece and this is a piece you don't see of course in P6 Web, P6 Client, there is no lean scheduling uh, tool in there. So we've got commitments. So you have a case where a company is committing to a due date on an activity. Now, as soon as they do that, you can, of course, if the task gets missed, there is reasons the task is missed available here. 
and you can recommit at that point. And we'll take a look at that a little closer in a minute. But you can track what is actually causing commitments to be missed. So if you've got something that's contributing to a lot of them, you've got the information, you can take a step and do what you need to do to correct it. Now we've got handoffs as well. Now this is basically connecting the tasks under the activity. Is there a specific flow they need to go in? So for example, if I needed to add a successor to this particular one, I can go in and simply add a successor. Now you can do the addition of successors, predecessors graphically as well, and we'll look at that in just a couple of minutes. Now you do have discussions available in here as well. So it's a fairly interactive planning board, not suggesting that you are not going to find use for this in a meeting and this is projected on a screen, but you can definitely post comments and discussions back and forth as well. So I'm going to say apply just because I did put that one successor connection in here. Now this particular file has been in process for a little while, not too long. You'll notice I've got some other icons underneath the title to this particular task, commitments. So it tells you right there how many times this activity has had the dates committed, twice. So I've got handoffs. Now my added work item for the handoffs, I can display them. And of course you can zoom in so that you can see it a little easier than what it defaults to. Now I have got a little checkbox here says task is not complete. So you see those particular icons across the bottom of the rest of the tasks that are shown on our board. Now you also have some other information that the software is trying to give us here. It's telling us this added work item one just underneath the, the task we were on is actually overdue. Yes, it is overdue. Just a heads up, this planning board works off of the system date. Where are we at right now? Not where is your schedule actually been scheduled to?